This has been all the talk at Westminster for the last couple of days. We know the government have been very keen on the prospect of tax cuts in an election year. They want Tory MPs worried about their, their seats, want to be able to take something back to their constituents and say, look, we have delivered uh, more money in your pockets. And so the debate was really between would they do it with national insurance or would they do it with income tax? The national insurance cut clearly has won the day for a couple of reasons. One, it is thought to be economically preferable. It's cheaper, crucially, because it's only paid by working people. And also, it's thought to be less inflationary than a cut to income tax. The arguments for income tax cuts were that, well, people understand it a bit better. And therein lies the challenge for the Conservatives. If they are to cut national insurance, which we understand they will propose tomorrow, is that going to give them any bounce to their, frankly, abysmal poll numbers or any more of a bounce than the last time they did it in the autumn statement? And frankly, the impact on the polls uh, from the autumn statement tax cut was negligible. So there is a very real risk that by cutting it tomorrow again, well, that will have very little political dividend for the Conservatives. And the other thing that I think is worth talking about every time we mention the budget is that one of the things that may well be done to fund this tax cut is some quite significant spending cuts. There is talk that Jeremy Hunt might uh, reduce the amount by which public spending increases from 1% a year by 20, from 2025 to 0.75% a year. Now, to give that a bit of context, that's essentially asking unprotected departments to make cuts of the same kinds of size that we saw in the austerity years under David Cameron and George Osborne. And frankly, nobody serious thinks that those cuts are remotely deliverable. So it's all actually a bit of fiscal fiction. Labour calls it maxing out the credit card. But the point is that their spending plans don't really differ very much at all. So what we really have is both of the main parties essentially colluding in a slightly nonsense scenario whereby we're funding tax cuts today from spending cuts in the future that no one really thinks are ever going to be deliverable.